let's learn about op art. Not to be confused with pop art. Op art stands for optical art, art that uses optical illusions. These are pieces that trick the brain into thinking something is happening that couldn't really happen in real life. The name op art was coined by Time Magazine in 1964. The first op artist I want to talk about is Bridget Riley, who was born in London in 1931. Her father was a printer who owned his own business. She didn't have much schooling until attending college. And as an adult, she worked in a glassware shop, as an illustrator, and as an art teacher. In 1958, she saw the work of Jackson Pollock and was inspired. She was also inspired by the scientific dot style of George Seurat. Around 1960, she began her signature op art style. Some of her best known op art is black and white, geometric lines and shapes that create the illusion of movement. Another op artist is Victor Vasarly. He often used colorful paintings to make 3D illusions by having clever uses of color or shapes that bend as if they are popping out of the painting. My favorite op artist is M.C. Escher. He was born Maritz Cornelius Escher on June 17, 1898 in the Netherlands. He was a sickly child who had trouble in school but was very good at art. In 1922, Escher went traveling and in Spain was inspired by the Moorish architecture at the palace called Alhambra. The decorations in this architecture are very geometric, and it has tessellations. A tessellation is an interlocking pattern that repeats with no gaps. At first, he drew very realistic art of the many places he visited, but he became more and more interested in the strange things you can do using math in art. He made impossible structures that twisted crazily in a way that wouldn't work in normal space and gravity. He used tessellated designs. And they're some of his most famous and impressive and recognizable works. Check out some of his art here. Uh, here. This one. This. Oh. Okay. These. This is a beautiful work. I like the details here. Very good. Very impressive. Look at all the effort that it must have taken Mm-hmm. Interesting. In April of 1966, Martin Gardner featured Escher's art in his mathematical games column in the magazine The Scientific American. Escher became famous with math lovers uh, for his wild art that used math to bend the laws of physics. Another intellectual who did op art was Akiyoshi Kitaoka, um, who would make very bright, colorful, and almost hard to look at op art that tricks your brain with the bright overlapping colors. Let's look at some examples of op art. Maybe this one, this. These are older, newer. Some simple, some more complex. Traditional, very strange. Okay, guys. Bye.